This is the physical setup for the humidity sensor. We have our humidity sensor on the left and our Arduino on the right. They are connected through three wires. Firstly, we have a wire going from the 5 volt pin to the 5 volt line on the humidity sensor. This is the white wire. The black wire is the ground wire. It connects the ground pin on the Arduino to the ground pin on the humidity sensor. The last wire is orange, and it connects A3 on the Arduino to the output pin on the humidity sensor. We used A3 because all of the A pins on the left represent analog pins. This means they have built-in analog to digital converters that can take an analog signal and convert it to the language that the Arduino understands. This is a simple program that we'll be using in order to verify that the humidity sensor setup is correct, as well as gather data points that we'll use in order to calibrate the sensor later. To begin our program, we instantiate a constant integer pin number and set it equal to 3. This is because we connected the output of the humidity sensor to analog pin 3 on the Arduino. Inside of setup, we run serial.begin and pass it 9600. This begins serial communications between the Arduino and the computer at a baud rate of 9600. This is what will allow us to actually view the information on the computer that's being spit out by the humidity sensor. Within loop, we instantiate a double called initial value and set it equal to analog read of pin number. Analog read of pin number is going to return the analog voltage seen at analog pin of pin number, which in our case is 3. However, remember that this value is scaled between 0 and 1023. Thus, we need to convert it back by multiplying by 5 and dividing by 1023. We then take that voltage and print it to the serial monitor using serial.println. The ln at the end signifies that after each voltage is printed, a new line will be attached. Thus, each voltage will occupy exactly one line of the serial monitor. This will make it easier to read, and you'll see what we mean when we actually open the monitor. Finally, we conclude with a delay of 100 milliseconds, so that the information isn't being sent to us at an incredibly fast rate. Let's upload the code. Open our serial monitor, and as you can see, we're getting some voltage values between around 2.79 and 2.82 volts. If you aren't seeing these values being sent to you, you have to make sure that the baud rate in the lower right hand corner is selected to the same value that you passed to serial.begin. In our case, we sent 9600 to the Arduino, and that is what our monitor is selected to. Checking and unchecking the auto scroll feature will stop the serial monitor from continuing to go to the newest input. If you uncheck it, it'll simply freeze to where you were previously. Let's verify that the humidity sensor is working properly by breathing on it and seeing if the humidity increases. As you can see, the voltage increased, corresponding to the increased humidity. Thus, the humidity sensor is working properly. Now we'll go over how we can actually calibrate the sensor. The humidity sensor has a linear relationship between voltage and humidity. Therefore, in order to calibrate it, we only need to take two voltage measurements inside of two different environments where we already know the humidity. In our case, we took one measurement inside and then took our circuit outside in order to get another measurement. We had another device with us that told us the actual humidity of both of those environments. Now we have two coordinate pairs so we can get our slope and y-intercept to create our linear equation. Now that we have our equation, we can plug it into a new program to actually output the real humidity instead of just the voltage. We slightly modified our original program in order to output the real humidity instead of just the voltage. At the top of our program, we have a double for the slope as well as a double for the intercept. Now, after calculating the voltage, we also multiply the voltage by the slope and add to it the intercept. This is the actual humidity, so we print it at the serial monitor. The hardware setup for the temperature sensor is almost the exact same as the one for the humidity sensor. However, the temperature sensor doesn't have its pins labeled. 
Therefore, it's necessary to orient yourself and then figure out what pins are what. First, face the flat side of the temperature sensor towards you. The middle pin is the V-out pin. This is what will connect to an analog pin on the Arduino. We connected it to A3. Now, the pin on the far left is the V-in pin. This pin will take 5 volts from the Arduino. The pin on the far right is the ground pin. Connect this to ground. The code we're using to verify the temperature sensor is the exact same code we used to verify the humidity sensor. We'll similarly use it in order to get our calibration curve. First, let's make sure that the temperature sensor is working properly. Let's open the serial monitor. The temperature sensor seems to be outputting a voltage between 0.76 and 0.77 volts. Now let's see if the temperature changes when I put my finger on it. As you can see, the value increased to 0.80 volts. Thus, the temperature sensor is responding to my increased temperature of my finger. Therefore, we can believe that the temperature sensor is working properly. We calibrated the temperature sensor by taking two measurements, one inside of our building and one outside. Just like the humidity sensor, we had another device with us that knew the temperature of the environments that we were in. And we used that in order to get our calibration points. From those calibration points, we created a slope and intercept and modified our code once more. Now our program outputs the actual temperature. The pressure sensor is a little different from the previous sensors because it has six pins, not just three. However, we are still only using three of the six pins. The other three should just be left connected to nothing on the breadboard. Once again, the pins aren't labeled, so we'll need to make sure to orientate ourselves correctly. Make sure that the silvery side of the little indentation is facing towards you. When that's true, the leftmost pin will be V out, which we connected to A3 on the Arduino. The pin immediately to its right is the ground pin, which we connected to ground on the Arduino. The pin to its right is VCC, which we connected to the 5 volt pin on the Arduino. Once again, we've used the same code to output the raw information to the serial monitor for both verification and for calibration. Let's open the serial monitor. The pressure sensor seems to be outputting about 4 volts. This seems reasonable. Unfortunately, it is rather hard to calibrate the pressure sensor by gathering two data points. Thus, we're going to assume that a value of 0 volts corresponds to 0 pressure. And we're just going to use the voltage we have here and correspond it to the pressure we have in this environment, which is 1 atm because we're at about sea level. Thus, we're going to say that 3.97 volts corresponds to 1 atm and 0 volts corresponds to 0 atm and form our linear calibration based off that. This is the program we wrote that incorporates the calibration that we got for the pressure sensor. In our circuit, we connected the VCC pin to the 3.3 volt voltage line on the Arduino. That's because the accelerometer cannot accept 5 volts as power supply. You could break the device if you plug it into the 5 volt line. We also connected the ground pin on the Arduino to ground on the accelerometer. We also connected the X, Y, and Z outputs of the accelerometer to analog pins A1, A2, and A3 respectively. This is the code that we're going to use in order to verify the accelerometer as well as get our points for calibration. To begin with, we have three constant integers for the three analog pins that we're connecting to. So 1, 2, and 3 for X, Y, and Z respectively. We begin our serial communications just like before. And now when we read in our values inside of loop, we need to convert all three back to voltages. Then we print all three to the serial monitor with a space in between and then an LN after the Z voltage. So when they're printed to the screen, we should see X, Y, and Z from left to right on one line. Let's open the serial monitor. All right. Now we will turn our circuit and see what happens. When I turn it this way, the Y and Z value should change, which is what you should be seeing. Same thing for this direction. And when I turn it this way, the 
the x and z shape value should be changing. You can find this out by looking at the axes that are printed on the top of the accelerometer. The arrow points in the direction that's positive for that axis. In the case of the z-axis, since it's a dot, that means the z-axis is coming out of the board, so the z-axis is pointing upward for positive. To calibrate the accelerometer, we need to create three calibrations, one for each axis. To do that, we need two points on each axis. We'll assume that when the axis is experiencing acceleration due to gravity, that is the only acceleration being placed on it, and that that's approximately equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. When the axis is not experiencing acceleration due to gravity, we'll assume it's not experiencing any acceleration at all, so zero. So we'll do that for each axis. Right now, the z-axis is the only axis experiencing acceleration due to gravity. Y and x must be zero. Now as I turn it, y-axis is the only one experiencing acceleration due to gravity, and the other two are experiencing nothing. The x-axis is the only axis experiencing acceleration due to gravity. Now that we have our coordinate pairs for each axis, we can form our linear calibration for each axis. Once we've done that, we need to simply write a new program that's very similar to the ones we did before, except this time we're doing a calibration for each axis. Once that's done, you should be able to see all your information outputted to the serial monitor. 